Hi, I'm Samantha Kapunan. I'm co-founder of I Want Seats, the Philippines' first real-time booking for buses, and I also founded Satori Lifestyle that provides programs for wellness. And I'm here to share with you the seven qualities of an entrepreneur. First, let's define what is an entrepreneur. And let's go with the definition by David Holt, who says, an entrepreneur is a person who starts a new venture, taking the initiative and risk associated with it, and does so by creating something new to provide value to customers. So we're already uh, seeing words like venture, initiative, and risk, which will, will be tackled later on in this course. And there's also a word that's highly associated with entrepreneurship, which is innovation. And innovation is simply uh, creating something new, like creating new products or new solutions. And it has to be of value because it has to be beneficial and useful. So what are the qualities of an entrepreneur? First is you have an appetite for risk. Building a venture in Italy comes with risk simply because you are investing a lot of your resources for something that is probably untested and unproven. You're investing your time, your money, your energy, your relationships, and perhaps even your reputation. And this is where a lot of entrepreneurs hesitate to even start. So how do we approach risk? First, we don't really want to dive in blindly. We also want to understand the environment first, so we want to take calculated risks. We want to do a research. We want to uh, have a bit of study of the customers, the competition, and if you have people who can mentor you or you can ask, then you can ask for advice. You can also have the mindset that conditions can change. Change is something that is constant, and if we expect change to happen, we have a better chance of dealing with it. For example, crisis can happen just as we experienced during the pandemic. Um, competitions can emerge, especially when you're doing well and you're succeeding and more people are copying you. If you expect this to happen, then you can become more prepared for it. Next is that it's very important to develop your intuition. There are some answers that cannot be logically explained, but you just know and you are sure of. So why do entrepreneurs take the risk at all? It's because it can come with a potentially high reward and the reward can come in profit, of course, but it can be something deeper like a personal mission or your advocacy. As Reid Hoffman says from LinkedIn, Starting a company is like throwing yourself off a cliff and assembling the airplane on the way down. So there's really a potential or a risk for crashing and failing. But if you do succeed on building that plane, you can fly. Next is as an entrepreneur, you know your why. Why is it important to know your why? Of course, uh, when you're building your venture, you will be making a lot of decisions and you need to be guided on how you make your decisions. Your why keeps you centered and makes sure that your decisions steer you to your vision. You're not making random choices that keep you off the path. Your why also anchors you through difficult times. When you're facing pressure and you're facing a lot of struggle, you will come back to the question of why you're doing what you're doing. When you know and understand your why, then your choices become easier. Knowing your why also builds trust with people around you. Of course, the people around you, such as your team and your investors, want to make sure that they're investing and they're taking the risk with you because you know what you're doing. So your why is simply your purpose, your essence, and the reason why your venture exists. As Melanie Perkins from Canva says, you have to believe in yourself and your vision for a very long time before anyone else will. As an entrepreneur, you think outside the box. And the box simply means the, the norm, the existing systems, and the, the status quo. 
of course, when we're dealing with innovation, we are creating things that are new, that, that are not part of the existing systems. For example, something we're all familiar with, the story of Apple, how Apple changed the way we experience the smartphone, the way we communicate, and even the way we listen to music. And who would have thought that we would be fine to sleep in a stranger's apartment or ride in a stranger's car? But this is exactly what Uber and Airbnb did, and now it's, it's a normal thing. Also, when we're dealing with limited resources, we want to be creative with our solutions and just roll up our sleeves and not be afraid to get our hands dirty because there are a lot of things that we need to get done and we want to do whatever it takes. Steve Jobs, the one who truly embodied thinking different, says, The people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. As an entrepreneur, you also adapt and learn. We know that change is constant. And if we go back to the idea of survival of the fittest, where the one who adapts to the environment the most has the better chance of surviving and thriving. So we want to accept the idea that change is constant. And we want to answer the question, how do we adapt to change? We also take the mindset that with every crisis lies an opportunity. How can we turn our problems into an advantage? In fact, a lot of successful entrepreneurs and businesses were started during crisis because they were able to see an opportunity that became successful after this time. As Tony Robbins says, In every crisis lies opportunity. People who are successful are not lucky. They are just prepared for opportunities that come their way. As an entrepreneur, you are a leader. As a leader, you are the one with the vision and you are the one who understands what you want to do with your venture. And so you want to lead people to follow and see through your vision. Imagine that your team is your orchestra and you want to understand each instrument, each person playing in order to play optimally as a group. We can also distinguish between managing and leading. When you're managing, of course, you are organizing and giving people instructions, which is good. But leadership is taking it a step further because you want to inspire your people. You want to know them and know what drives them so that they can decide to follow you. So as a leader, it's very important to understand people, to understand your customers, to understand your team. As Simon Sinek says, leaders are the ones who have the courage to go first, to put themselves at personal risk, to open a path for others to follow. The next one is very important. As an entrepreneur, you invest in yourself. Building a venture means you have a lot of responsibilities and often we get lost or get caught in all the things we do that we forget to take care of ourselves. This can risk uh, an entrepreneur being burnt out or sick. So how do we pour from an empty cup? If we don't take care of ourselves, how do we take care of our venture? How do we take care of the people? With a healthy mind and a healthy body, it's better for us to optimally perform. It's also important to develop different areas of your life to create balance. So. Remember that as an entrepreneur, your life is not all about your work. Of course, it's very important that you will be making sacrifices, but it's also important to be reminded that you have other areas of your life. You will need to take care of your rest, your relationships, and even develop other hobbies. Self-mastery also makes you indispensable. Meaning, the more you work on yourself, the more you have experience, and the more you have extensive knowledge, the more you attract the right people for you, the right investors, the right team, and the right mentors, and even friends. From the man who is a master at investment, Warren Buffett, he says that the best investment you can make is in yourself. 
And finally, as an entrepreneur, you understand that failure is part of success. Failures can be costly and even painful, but this is something that we can expect when we're building something that we are passionate about. So how do we overcome the fear of failure? First is that we want to remind ourselves that we're really doing something new that is unproven and it's natural that we will be experimenting with this idea, you'll be experimenting with uh, solutions, so it will also be normal to make mistakes because how will we know, how can we prove our idea unless we try? We also have the mindset that mistakes are also lessons, so with, with loss, there's something that you can gain. What can you gain from a mistake or a failure? How can you apply what you learned in your next project or endeavor? This also builds grit and resilience. So remember that courage is like a muscle. So the more we expose ourselves to our fears like failure, the more we become stronger and the more challenges we can eventually um, face in our lives. Learning from failures is part of success. Elon Musk, who has launched rockets and who, whose rockets initially exploded and failed, says, failure is an option here. If you are not failing, you are not innovating enough. And there you have it, the seven qualities of an entrepreneur. I hope you enjoyed and thank you for listening.